You can either plant something or you can plant everything. Depending on how you feel, right? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Are you ready to horse? So, a little bit, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about Omaha. Can I pay attention? Yep. Yep. Even though we're, we're busy with our snacks, can we still have your. Yep. Just put food in the mouth while I'm talking. Um, so, for our Aloha Aina, mm -hmm. I was thinking a cool thing that we could do was to, um, if we video ourselves and make selfies and say, you know, like put a hashtag that says Aloha Aina and say, today for Aloha Aina, I did, and we can all go in front and say what we've done, and then we can share that onto the internet and people can see kind of how That's we. Awesome. Are being part of caretaking the earth. So you might want to bring that in so you can see so it can be super cool while you're doing it. What? Could you do this gig? Yeah, oh, yeah, my selfie stick. So, so after we're done with class, um, if you'd like to do that, uh, we can. And I'd like to kind of start that with you guys. So that way we have. Can I bring the vocals? Yeah. Quit it. Can you bring our vocals? You have? Yeah. Which ones? Go to three. So, four. Rory, why are you in the back? So, what? Because you told me to get in the back. Because I don't want you disturbing the class, right? Ah. So, I need you back there. So, our, so, today I want to kind of continue with a little bit with our energy lesson. I was talking. Uh, Monday about kind of how we use energy and, and how that can be an exponential function versus linear and then how fast it grows and how fast we use the resources. And then yesterday I was talking about anybody remember what I was talking about yesterday? The oil in our food. That was one thing. Yeah, the gasoline how how one liter earth is like worth $20,000. Yep, the cost, the true cost, I guess. And then, what else is it talking about? Oh, 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 continue on today is to show you of how we interact with the earth and where our fuel comes from today. So, so what part of being a good student is leading by example. So, today where I want to kind of continue with this energy lesson is where our energy comes from. And for most of our human history, for most of our human history, and I'm talking about humans that have been around for 60, 80, 100,000 years, like my grandpa, he got his energy straight from the sun. Solar. The sun makes the, evaporates the water, makes it rain. You get your energy right there. The sun makes the trees grow. You burn that to make your fire, you get it right from the sun, right? You're kind of directly working right in harmony with the sun and the nature and everything that's happening. They do. Strawberry is better. Can I bring my bowl from tomorrow? Yeah. Um, what was the topic here? Um, so we're going to talk about the energy that we get from the sun. But what the sun did for us is for millions of years, the sun would send its energy down and plants and little microorganisms would capture that energy in them 
and then they get buried under the ground. And so they're taking sunlight to grow. They're using sun as their energy, but then they're getting buried under the ground, buried under the ground. And that happened for a long time, billions of years, that's happened. So if we look at this timeline here, for billions of years, the sun was the only energy coming in, and the trees were burying it into the ground, burying it into the ground. And then, all of a sudden, right around the year 1800 or so, we discovered that all that energy was being buried under the ground. That they had taken all, those, all that sunlight and stored it under the ground in this great energy form. And that energy form is what we call... Oil! Oil. Oil. Which, which oil is just the name for liquid carbons. that are these long chains. So it can be many different things, but we, we get oil from the store, we get gas, or we get propane, or we get these, these things that are all kind of oil. And we started in the year 1800 to pump it out of the ground and start to use it. And so for four billion years, we didn't really have that much energy. And all of a sudden we found all that energy that had been stored under the ground. And we started to use it. And it's actually kind of funny because one of the first oil wells was called Drake's Well. So, Drake's Well. Yeah. Well, it's awesome. It is Eric. It's true. No. Um, so what's happened is we've been using this at about a, a constant growth rate, which is kind of an oxymoron, of 3% a year. <laughs> And when you do something and it grows at 3% a year, just like we talked about, that becomes an exponential function. And so when you first start to use it, your numbers aren't growing that fast, right? 24 is not that much bigger than one. And so when you're first using it, and, and 120 is not that much bigger than one, right? And so in the first years when you're using it, you're not using that much. But pretty soon down here, you've got eight years, and now you've used 40,000. Right, and a 40,000 is a lot bigger than one, right? And so what happens is, when you start to look at our use, at first we weren't using that much, we weren't using that much, we weren't using that much. But then all of a sudden, we started to use a whole lot, and our numbers got up to like 40,000, a million, 10 billion, there, you know, we're starting to get to these huge numbers. And do you see how this is getting steeper and steeper and steeper? Yeah. And that if we continue to base our use on 3% of growing, that means, yeah, next year we're going to have to be even further up here of use. And we haven't gone that much further this way, right? We're way over there and we haven't gone that far. And so what happens is you use so much in these between here and there that pretty soon if we keep going, we're going to be too steep and all that stuff that was stored in this time period is going to be gone just really soon and so what this is called is kind of like um, exponential growth uh, but this is what they base our whole economy on and they just assume it's going to continue to grow but in reality what happens is these things grow up like this but then we don't find as much, and it starts to turn back, and it starts to go, and we don't, we don't use as much, right? Because we start to run out. And what this is called right here, when you hit this top, is yeah, called top bottom. the peak. The peak, right? It's just like the peak of a mountain. And so when you hit this peak, what happens to this, this right here, is this equals zero, right at the top. Because there's no more growth happening right at your very top. You hit zero, so you went to 3% here, you climbed up. And now on this back side of the thing, you now go into negative 3%. Whoa! And so your growth is no longer getting bigger, it's shrinking. And so you have to base your economy not on a growing and we're going to have more next year, but you have to base your economy on it shrinking and we're going to have less next year. And so as we hit this peak for all resources, 
it starts to shift how we interact with our thing. We, we can't have a bigger car next year. We actually have to have a smaller car next year. You know what? what? I mean? You can't have um, like every, everything starts to shrink. Yeah, if you use, you know, yeah, we all, you have to shift how your economy goes as you start to hit this. And what, what's been happening is that all this energy was stored over here, and we're not replenishing it that fast. So we're going to have to go down this peak. And the other thing about it is that all the oil that was in the ground acted kind of as a maximum security prison. So these long carbon chains were tying up these dangerous elements. You know if you go and you breathe car exhaust, you get sick? Oh, for real? Yeah, don't try it. Don't try it. Don't try it. Or did it? Um, don't do it anymore. <laughs> what do you mean by sick? Yeah. You, you start to feel like hey, you start to feel kind of woozy. If oh, you yeah. it, continued it for, a, for an extended amount of time, you would, you would pass away through a parachute, you cease to function. And it's because there's a lot of toxins in that. And so these toxins were all buried into the ground here. And within that liquid carbon, but as we burnt it, we released it into the atmosphere. So, not only do we have less oil to work with, we're now on this side of the curve, we're also going to have to deal with getting all those toxins and poisons back into the ground. And the way that they were put in the ground in the first place was through the microorganisms. Through the microorganisms working with the dust. With the sun. And so going back to this and understanding how, where our energy came from today, how we're using it today, and how we can get back to where we were super rich. We had all this energy stored. It's like you had all this you know, reserve and wealth to work with. Is that it started with the microorganisms in the sun. So my idea for future technology, especially Travis here, because I know he's super interested in technology. You can tell by how he's looking at that thing is that it's microorganisms and re-understanding the sun and how to um, reform these carbon bonds, which the microbes in the plants do when we have healthy plants, to re-sequester those toxins and put them back into the ground with less energy, right? We're talking about Mr. Drake's farming methods where I'm going out and instead of just getting a weed whacker and cutting things, I'm cutting stuff with a sickle and using it and building and saving more energy because I'm trying to sequester these things without releasing more. Okay. So the sun combined with the sun plus the plants and the microbes plus What's the most important? Liquid carbon is a maximum security for dangerous elements. What's the most important? The plants. What do we need here? We got the sun, we got the plants, we got the microbes. What else do we need? Water! Food! Rain. Water? Water. The sun's going to take care of the rain. What else do we need? Food, maybe. What else? What else do we need? What else do we need? Love! 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 All this stuff that we burn back into the ground so we can be safe again and have a nice, healthy environment that we can actually work and turn this negative 3% growth rate into a positive benefit for us by reducing the amount of fuel we're burning each year and sequestering more, or more 
uh, growing better gardens right around our neighborhood. We a three a negative three percent growth rate is good for us. Why? It's going to strengthen our local economy. It's going to make people want to buy sweet potatoes from you for more money. Um, it's it's going to you know make local transportation and local options and local jobs available for us as we start to enter into a negative growth rate and we hit the back side of this curve. So understanding that and understanding that the sun plus the plants plus the microbes plus plus me plus me equals prosperity. It's, it's all this combined. Yeah. Okay, we'll be in the 